So beacons are a protocol by API 3 that allows data providers to create first party operated data feeds. We've done this to allow smart contracts to call frequently updated um, values like prices and stop commodity prices directly in transparency from the source API provider. We felt there were some issues with third party data feed architecture. So there are two main ways that third party data feeds are constructed at the moment. Uh, broadly speaking, these can be described as on chain and off chain aggregation. Uh, the initial um, use case, or the initial way data feeds were composed in third party or by third party Oracle projects was using on chain aggregation. The advantages here are that you can see exactly which nodes are posting chain and what values they're posting. The downside is it's still opaque and you still can't see what sources they're using to post the data on chain. And it scales fairly poorly because you actually have quite an expensive aggregation to process on chain. Um, and you also have the issue of who's controlling the aggregation. If the aggregation contract is controlled by an entity that can kick nodes off and add nodes on at will, then the problem here is that whoever is controlling that contract, in effect, is trusting them with your data in time. So it's, it's not really decentralized. It's centralization of the governance layer is still a problem. The other architecture that we see used today is where you have off chain aggregation from multiple third party nodes. This saves a lot of gas at the aggregation level, um, but you're, you're kind of trading off centralization of this. It's centralized that the Oracle that posts the data on the chain. It kind of magnifies the problem of not knowing where the data sources are because it even makes the nodes harder to do, and, like hard to detect what values they're posting. And you still have a middle attack, so you still have to pay the node operators to call the APIs and to protect the data on the chain. The Beacons is designed to be transparent, scalable, and basically enable you to get data straight from the source that's providing it. The data provides themselves run the API, or sorry, run the beacons, so you know exactly where the data is coming from, and there's no third-party oracle that sits in the middle taking fees. And um, requests to smart contracts can receive a value that comes directly from the API, and it's transparent first-party design allows people to know exactly where the data is coming from, which means developers can assess like the reliability and how good the data is likely to be from the API provider providing it. By combining the API and the oracle. Beacons make the cost of data, or Beacons should make the data feed available for a lower cost by removing the cost of on-chain aggregation and removing the need to pay third-party nodes. And it does this without compromising security, because actually with third-party nodes, you have a potential civil attack risk, um, whereas with the API itself, that risk isn't there. For data providers, Beacons offer a way to uh, monetize their data to Web3 directly, which doesn't involve Paying API subscription to these third party node operators and the scales as people use it on chain rather than revenue the scales of the number of nodes that are supplied. You control who gets access to your data because you have full control over that as you're running the node and it's powered by AirNode, which means it's very easy for you to deploy these feeds and to keep them up. For ETH Denver, we're introducing Amber Data Beacons. They should be launching in Q2 2022. Um, they'll be live initially then on Ethereum, Polygon, BNB, Chain, and Arbitrum. They're live now on um, Mumbai, which is Polygon Testnet, and Free Ethereum Testnet as well. So we'd really like to see what people are going to make with beacons in the hackathon. And I'll hand over to Barack now. He's going to walk you through some examples of what you can do with them.